Welcome to Lutheran Church of the Holy Spirit Worship Online, and thank you for continuing to make this a part of your spiritual journey. I invite you to uh, share and, and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or share and the link on your Facebook page, so that others might know uh, God's love through this message. Thanks again for being here. We have Holy Week coming up shortly, and we will have services on both Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday at 7 o'clock in the evening. So if you're in the Denver metro area, please consider yourself invited and welcomed. And our Easter service on Sunday morning will be at 9 o'clock. Also, tune in to hold an evening prayer during these Lenten journeys. We've got two more left before the, before the end of before Holy Week comes. I will get there. Now I invite you to light a candle in your space as a visible symbol and a reminder of the Holy Spirit's presence and partnership in our lives and in our work in the world. Baptism is sometimes called enlightenment. The Gospel for this Sunday is the story of the man born blind, healed by Jesus. I was blind, now I see, declares the man. In baptism, God opens our eyes to see the truth of who we are, God's beloved children. As David was anointed King of Israel, in baptism God anoints our head with oil and calls us to bear witness to the light of Christ in our daily lives. Discerner of hearts, you look beneath our outward appearance and you see and see your image in each of us. Banish in us the blindness that prevents us from recognizing truth so that we may see the world through your eyes and with the compassion of Jesus Christ who redeems us. Amen.
to the darkness of our hearts and anoint us with your spirit for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen First reading The Lord said to Samuel How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel Fill your horn with oil and set out I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peacefully? He said, Peacefully, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked at Eli and said, thought, Surely the Lord's anointed now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinibib and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Samma pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sat and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel lesson today comes from the ninth chapter of the Gospel of John. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? 
Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And when he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva, and he spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying it to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went, and he washed, and he came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. And others were saying, Nah, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? And he answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it in my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. And they said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus had made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask how he had received his sight. And he said to them, he put mud on my eyes. Then I washed and now I see. And some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God for he does not observe the Sabbath. And others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? They were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened, and he said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that, that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight, and they asked his parents, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that he now sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. And his parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. And therefore his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind and they said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. And he answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. And they said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? And then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. And the man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. And they answered him, You were born entirely in sins. And are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? And he answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. And Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. And Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this, and they said to him, 
Surely we are not blind, are we? And Jesus said to the Pharisees, If you were blind, you would not have sinned. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Eddie was an extrovert in his assisted living community. He always plunked himself down right in the middle of where the action was going on, in a chair by the mailboxes, at, at the entrance to the dining room, or right there in front of the TV in the sitting room. He knew everyone by name. Good morning, Miss Liddy. Your knees must be hurting you today. Hello there, Harry. Lydia is looking for you, and my, oh my, is she ever mad. Well, hello, Martha. You got a letter today. Maybe it's from that son of yours. Watch out, Charlie. Someone spilled some water over there. The floor might be slick. His conversation and his care for the people, it went on and on. And You know what was amazing about this one, Eddie? He was blind. He was born that way, but he didn't miss a trick. He saw more with his blindness than most of us see with our two good eyes. He saw with his ears and his gut and his heart. You, say, you see, sometimes blind is not really blind, and seeing is not really sight. All of us are born blind and quite possibly grow so over time, in one way or another. Some of us have blindness of body. Maybe it's a crippling disease, or cancer, or diabetes, or bad bones, or MS, or RA. Some of us have blindness of heart, and that's a tough blindness. The blind of heart, they can't fully love someone they can't fully love someone else beyond a superficial level, and usually they can't even love themselves unless, of course, there's narcissism. This blindness is a whole different kind of thing. The blind of heart, they often live lives corroded with addictions to material things or possessions, work. And it's all there to cover up this empty hole. Worst of all, I think, is a blindness of soul which wraps all the rest of life in this gloomy darkness. Think for a moment. What kind of blindness lives inside you or with you each day? And here's a truth. Jesus notices our blindness. Jesus sees. Jesus invites us to see. Jesus invites us to see with our very blind eyes, with our wounds and our brokenness. And Jesus uses our weaknesses, and they're carried out in grace. See, when tragedy of one form or another strikes us, we often ask, why? Why did this happen to me? And in today's gospel story, the disciples are also, at, they're also asking, why? Whose fault is this, they, they ask. What did they do wrong to deserve this? Well, Jesus' response is that the blindness was an opportunity for the works of God to be manifest and revealed. We often look at our physical and our mental blindness as a curse. And to be sure, Jesus does heal as he healed the blindness in this story. Yet, at the same time, if we look closely, we can see that the blindness is a door to grace. It is the sick who need a doctor. It is the blind who need to see. It is we, all of us, who need the redemption, the transfiguration, the, the burning light, so that God's work might be revealed. Or another word for this is manifest. 
Have you ever thought about this? It simply says that our call in life, our reason for being, our heart's delight is to make Christ revealed. Jesus is the image, the, the exact reflection of God. And we are called to become the image of Jesus. And if we believe, when we believe that the kingdom of God is at hand, then we are the image of Christ here and now, right now in this moment, and we are called to be the reflected image of Christ. So we are called to manifest Jesus. We are called to reveal, to reflect, and to burn bright with the light of Christ. We are called to manifest, to reveal this hope in every part of our lives. And I think most of us, we come to church or we watch this, this uh, worship to be near the light, to be touched by the light, to be assured of Jesus, to, to see Jesus. And are we tempted to dim or even turn off that light when we go out the door or when we turn off our computers at the end of worship? What does it look like for us to let God be manifest? To let Jesus be revealed within us to others? In other words, what does it look like for us to be a blinding light of God? Well, frankly, this is hard work. It's pretty easy to see Jesus, to reflect Jesus when we are in a safe place. It's quite another issue to reflect Jesus when our feet hurt or when the kids are screaming or when our partner is preoccupied, when the budget groans and when there are crazy people on the road and traffic isn't moving as fast as we'd like, and when the culture or the political rhetoric becomes even more aggressive, it's pretty hard for us to reveal and reflect Jesus. And this is exactly where Jesus paused, stopped, saw, healed. These ordinary places are the places of God's work in us. Over the next few months, this community, Lutheran Church of the Holy Spirit, we will be intentionally working to see the mission, to better see the mission that God is calling us into in the months and the years ahead. A mission which fits with our specific gifts and our context within the changing communities in which we live. Part of this process is simply learning better to see God's abundance. Learning better to see God's grace and the work of the Holy Spirit that's always happening in our midst. Jesus plays a lot with this concept of blindness. There is this almost humorous upside down turning pirouette between the sighted that are blind and the blind that see. Jesus is a little bit like Copernicus of old and we know how much trouble he got into when he said that Things are not as they appear. The world is not flat. The earth is not the center around which all else revolves. Jesus says that what we think is true often is not. The sighted are blind and the blinded see. The Pharisees, the clean, pressed, righteous, church-going, psalm-singing, altar-kneeling, keepers of the rules, they were not the ones that Jesus sought out in his day, in the day-to-day -day life that he lived. You see, Jesus, he hung around with the outsiders. He sought and he loved the drunks, those that we might call obvious sinners. He loved the tax collectors, the youths, the abused. He hung out and he cared with the folks on the edge of society, the other in our midst. 
Lord, may you continue to heal us. Thanks be to God. Teach us to perceive the beauty of the breath of your creation, from the grandest mountain range to the smallest springtime bud. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Powerful God, you anoint kings and establish rulers. Guide the work of the head of state and elected officials. Encourage them to lead with justice and to remove barriers that impede the well-being of all. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Shepherding God, you lead us beside still waters and restore our souls. 
Keep watch over those who weep. Tend all who are sick and comfort those who grieve. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. God, our host, you fill us at your table with more than we could ever ask. Feed us with the hunger for justice. Equip the feeding ministries of this congregation and community. Nourish us so that we can nourish our neighbors. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Today we pray for Kelly W., Ron, Nettie, Kelly M., and all those that we name now on our lips or in our hearts. Receive our prayer. God of history, with thanksgiving, we remember our ancestors in faith who cared for your people. We praise you for the ways they formed the faith of others and continue to inspire us. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And now receive this blessing. May God, the giver of love, and Christ, the resurrection and the life, and may the Holy Spirit of rebirth bless you in this Lenten journey. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Serve in love. Thanks be to God. Call my heart to life from the 